Hi, in this video, we'll go through some more exercise on electrical field strength and also electrical potential. So we'll cover question 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, and 19. So you may want to try first and pause the video now. A few moments later. Question 10. It said there are two charges, Q1, Q2, and then they are that much distance apart. Uh, I asked you to find the electrical potential at a point P, which is that much from Q1, that much from Q2. One very important idea that you must understand for potential and field strength is that potential is an idea of is a quantity of scalar while field strength is a factor and the, the difference obviously for field strength is more tricky you have to account for the direction so you may need to do trigonometry or even you have to draw it out for sure but for potential it's a scalar you just have to add them up together and you don't even need to care about their direction and so here I believe this one is useless. You just have to use the equation that you have and you'll be able to construct the equation that you need. And so if you don't remember, you can go back and check out the equation that you have, which is uh, V equals to KQ over L as the general equation. And so here the total electrical potential will be the KQ1 R1, if I call this R1, plus KQ2 over R2, you just add two potential together. And so because of the time, I have already put down the steps here, and you can go and check out your own answer. The answer should be negative 1.5 times 10 to the power of 4V. Notice that this is negative. So here I still put it as positive, but then when you substitute Q2, it is negative. So it's actually minus this fraction. Question 11 is a bit more tricky because it gives you a square which has 10 cm so that would equal to 0 0.1 meter for uh, the side length and then at each corner at each vertice it will have a charge of 5 mu coulomb and it asks you to find out the potential at the center so definitely one thing you need to know is the distance from the charge that means from each vertice to the center so let's call it r and um, yeah the side will be 0 0.1 and so obviously you'll be able to get this by different approach you may use I guess a uh, cosine law that you know this one is going to be 90 degree because uh, is it 360 divided by 4 yeah it should be 90 degrees and so uh, you can use this as r this is r and this is 0 0.1 so that means um, r square plus r square root equals to 0 0.1 that means 0 0.1 0 1 equals to 2 r square that means 0 0.01 divided by 2 r square and that means r equals to this and so for part a uh, using the same idea like what we said earlier then it would simply be k q over r and since you have 4 and each of them is exactly the same then you multiply by 4 so the answer should be something like 2542755 which you could run it to 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6 V for part A. For part B is actually very simple because uh, no matter what charge you have, all these forces from each vertice that charge, they would cancel out because they have the same quantity of charge same distance but then you can see geometrically they will all cancel out you can say this one cancel with this one and then this one will cancel with this one and so for part b it will simply be zero you can try to explain in words maybe uh, if this is really in the exam if necessary 
Pasi is asking you how do you reconcile your answer to A and B. So basically asking you how A and B are consistent because it looks a bit strange that potential is a large number but then the electric field is literally zero. Uh, yeah, that may look strange uh, if you first learn about you know the concepts here. When we try to explain this question, of course, we have to go and cite the definition. Okay, and so if you try to look up uh, if there are anything here, you can see this is the one that you need. All right, so let's write it down because E, which is electrical field strength, which is uh, the answer in part B, equals to negative change in potential over change in the distance. And so, in fact, if you try to look around of the whole pattern at the middle, this is the maximum. So you may say uh, at the middle, middle point, the electrical potential is at maximum or at least a local maximum. And so therefore, well, I mean, if that's the case, then of course E equal to zero because uh, you just have to think about uh, Maybe if you have learned about calculus, then you know whenever uh, you find a slope which is equal to zero, then that is the turning point, right? For example, if you have a graph like these, let's say, okay, doesn't really matter how, how the graph is. And then if you try to draw a point here, this is uh, the local maximum, this is local minimum. And if you try to find the slope, of course the slope is going to be zero okay so yeah so that that simply is uh, making sense for now question 13 is asking you how much work done it is for an electron to be brought from infinity to uh, somewhere nearby a charge and so I don't know why they ask you this because this is very simple that it's just so straightforward because uh, the equation that you have, the electrical potential, that means uh, the work done that you need to overcome is simply K, Q1, Q2 over R. And this is simply the energy you need to bring from infinity. If you remember, we learned about that in gravitation. It's the same here. Uh, infinity is defined as zero. And so this equation is calculating how much energy it is to bring from zero, that means infinity, to that particular point. And so for calculating it, it's simply like Q, K, Q1, Q2 over R. And so uh, if you substitute, and that would simply be the answer. If you really want to make it like look a bit more formal, uh, what you could do is you can say W equals to Q delta VE, Q delta VE, but then for this delta VE, it will simply be the same thing minus same thing minus the potential at infinity, which is zero. So that means eventually, oh sorry, not there's no Q here. Alright, which is eventually the same thing because if you look at this one. And this one, yeah, is going to be eventually the same. Uh, e here, all right, don't take me wrong, this is referring to the energy, okay, which is the work done, simply. All right, so I'm not going to do it, and I guess you can try to figure out the answer, and just for your reference, this should be the answer. It should be positive because you have electron, and the charge that giving you electric field is also negative, so become positive eventually. 14 is finally something more interesting. So you find there's a point A, a point B. Point A will have 100 volt, B will have 200 volt. So try to draw the diagram to illustrate how it looks like. And then there's an electron coming from A to B. All right, and obviously there's a potential difference and therefore there must be a change of speed here because those work done uh, will be contributed towards the kinetic energy or the other way around. And here, uh, just to 
double check with the question whether or not it's sensible uh, you should think about that uh, hey for voltage it go from high to low right 200 to 100 volt normally when I say normally it means to the positive charge okay so positive charge will move from 200 volt to 100 volt uh, when I say move more precisely I should say accelerate but then for electron because it's opposite in charge compared to the positive is negative and so the interaction will simply be the opposite that means they will accelerate they will gain energy from lower voltage to a higher voltage okay so the whole thing will actually make sense for now we'll have to calculate the work done first so that will be W equals to Q delta V and so for electron you will have to find from the data booklet and this is going to be quite essential and you use it quite often right here so 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 and then the V will simply be uh, you can you can simply say 200 minus 100 and that will be the amount of energy that you get so let's calculate this first well of course it's simply just multiply 100 and then this energy is the one that fully get to be the kinetic energy and so you can say Ke equals to half mv squared because they want to calculate speed and so that ke would simply be the one that we calculated equals to half m for the mass of the electron you can actually find it in the data booklet right because it's also useful for other chapter as well later on anyway here we should use the si unit so kg that one so 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 and then v square so okay, with this only one unknown then for sure you'll be able to find the answer so eventually you should find something like 5926738 so you might want to run it to 5.9 times 10 about 1 2 3 4 5 6 meter per second because everything else is in SI unit okay question 15 cause 15 looks tedious right you look at the four vertices they are kind of like in in the random numbers you, you can tell that is very tedious because there's no symmetry in it part A is asking you to find the force acting on this charge for some reason I don't know why find the magnitude and direction of the net force on this so uh, obviously there will be three forces due to the other three so we will have uh, this one because they it is attractive so it will be attracted towards this this is also negative so it will be attracted towards this and then for the four mu coulomb it will be repulsive so going in this direction and let me just name them call it F1, F2 and F3 and in fact for every single force that you have to calculate here it's just a Coulomb's law so F well actually I think you can recall but I would like to show you the equation uh, that is KQ1, Q2 over R square KQ1, Q2 over R square and so uh, the only tricky thing is because you have got 5 cm for the side of this square and then uh, the only thing that you may find a bit tricky is the distance between these two and again you can think about uh, semi Pythagoras theorem then this is should be uh, root 50 yeah I think you, you all should know this and that's pretty much oh wait here there should be a square sorry okay so substitute everything in and uh, you just have to consider the trigonometry which is uh, with the sine and cosine uh, then you should be able to find out the answer okay so I'm not going to write down these steps but I think you can check with these three values for F1, 2 and 3 and after you get it then uh, obviously we are going to get the 
horizontal component and also vertical component. So for fx, it's going to be horizontal, which means f1, uh, depending on which side you, you define as positive. Uh, if I take right hand side and vertical like going up is positive, like how we do uh, x, y coordinate, then we should have f3 cosine theta. This is the angle. And in fact, this, well, it is just simply the same angle as this one. So this should be 45 degree. Uh, obviously, you can tell. So 45 for cosine here and then minus because uh, this will give you a projection like this one and then you have to minus f1 so minus f1 here so this will give you the horizontal component for the net force and then for vertical component is very similar f3 sine 45 degree minus f2 and after you get it, you know, uh, in terms of magnitude, like you how you learn in chapter 1.3, you can get fx square, fy square, and then you'll be able to find the final value. And then for the angle, you can find tangent theta, which is the angle to the horizontal, uh, fy over fx. So again, for your right I'm not going to write down all the steps. The answer you should find for fx, the horizontal component, net force should be 3.0. Vertically, it should be negative 11.4. When you combine them using Pythagoras theorem, it will be 11.8 Newton. And eventually, you should find the angle as negative 75 degree. Part B, once again, they ask you to calculate the electrical potential at the center. And so similar to the previous question that you should know, potential is a scalar. So it doesn't really care about the direction. And this time, it's just much easier. You just have to keep spamming the equation about electrical potential. That is V equals to KQ over L. And as for the L, it will simply be the distance from each vertex to the center and since you know this is root 50 so this is root 50 divided by 2 simply so just add all four together uh, for the individual potential and you should get the answer and so the answer you find should be this value 5.1 times 10 to the power of 5 V Part C asking you about the work done, and so obviously you have to use work done equals to Q delta V, this equation again, uh, and you move it from infinity. So once again, uh, at infinity, the potential is zero, so you just have to find out the potential at the center, which is your answer in part B. So uh, you should find nano, nano should be 10 to the power of negative nine. So that's the charge multiply with the V we find earlier. So yeah, the answer should simply be 5.1 times 10 to the power of negative four joule. Question 19 is probably the most interesting one and a bit similar to the previous one where we tried to calculate uh, how that, like, like 14, how uh, the electrical potential will affect its kinetic energy. And so here it's saying that it has a certain speed. And obviously that means it has certain kinetic energy. And it will be moving towards this. And I believe this has to be, well, not necessarily electron, but something that is negative, negative in charge. And then uh, so that the electron will be repelled and having uh, the moment where you will stop that means the ke will literally be zero because that all got turned into potential energy and turn back and so you can construct an equation that is ke equals to electrical potential energy or simply the water if you like to k is half mv squared as we all know as for the electrical potential or work done you can say q delta v and then uh, one thing that you should not miss is, is that electrical potentials and uh, potential is zero at the initial point. So uh, basically it means it starts from infinity. So 
that will be leaving you with the potential at P and by the way the Q here is simply the charge of the electrons so E is the one that I'm going to use So again, by substituting uh, all the values into it, you can find the mass of electron from the data booklet, velocity from the question, and uh, charge of electron again from the data booklet. You can find something like 7.1978 something. Remember, it's negative because the charge itself is negative. And eventually, you get something like negative 7.2 V. And so the rest should be very easy because it asks you to determine the magnitude of Q when they given you the distance and so this potential obviously is due to this charge and so uh, you can say vp equals to kq the actual q here over r so negative 7.2 equals to 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 q is the one that we want to find and r is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 10 so eventually you should get the Q to be negative 1.60179 something well actually times 10 to the power of negative 19 so run it to negative 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb that's the unit